This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. Every week at this time, two great names are joined. Never heard of Nick. Ordering a dish of macaroni just so somebody else won't get it. Yes, Patsy, but it's this particular dish that holds the fortune. But what if you don't get it before Green Hat does? Then I failed in what I promised to do. But what happens after you get the dish of macaroni, Nick? We search it for what it contains. And after that? Anything can happen. Now, the case of the wandering macaroni. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by Old Dutch Cleanser. It's been a busy day for Nick Carter, who's been cleaning up the routine business that has piled up on his desk. Now it is late afternoon, and Nick is still dictating letters to his recording machine, while his secretary, Patsy, sits at her desk and taps her foot impatiently. Dear Mr. Gaylord, I received your letter dated January 17th, semicolon. However, it is not my policy to accept cases of this nature, period. I find yes. that activities of the sort you suggest are incompatible with a general standing yes. that I have attempted to... Mm. But that's it. You turned off the machine. That's right. It's 5.30. I won't transcribe those letters till tomorrow anyway. And besides, it's my birthday. I only... Oh, Miss you... Carter, you promised me six months ago that we'd go out to dinner to celebrate my birthday, and I'm going to drag you away from the office. I have to use a blackjack. All right, all right, Patsy. I didn't forget. <sighs> Well, close up the office right now and go out and celebrate. Well, that's better. Which do you think would be nicer, Nick? The Penguin Room or the Moonlight Roof? Your choice, Patsy. You're the birthday child. Uh, I think the Penguin Room. They've got that big name band and all the... Hmm, the door. Oh, no. Not another case. Let's keep very quiet and maybe he'll go away. I'd like to, but it might be important. Don't worry about the dinner, Patsy. I'll see to it that you... Mr. Carter? Come in. You're Nick Carter, the detective. That's right. This is my secretary, Miss Bowen. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? What can I do for you? I want you to get me a, a dish of macaroni. <laughs> Beg your pardon. I thought you said macaroni. I did? What? Well, perhaps I'd better explain. Well, I should think so. My name is Griswold. Ben Griswold. Years ago, I used to work as a contact man for your father, Tim Carter, when he needed an inside track and uh, uh, unusual circles. Hey, wait a minute. Ben Griswold, I remember you. Well, I hoped you would. Well, you used to come to the house when I was a boy and help me with arithmetic. That's right, Nick. But I need your help now. I can't go to the police. I, I can't afford publicity of any sort. It would ruin me. I'd be glad to do anything I can, Ben. I pay anything you ask. Now, don't worry about that. For an old friend of my father's, it's on the house. But you said you wanted a dish of macaroni. Yes. Now, here's the whole setup. At 7.03 tonight, a man wearing a green hat will go into the cafeteria at 47th Street and Avenue M. Yes. Exactly one minute later, he'll drop a glass on the floor and break it. But why? That's an identification signal. Then at 7.05, he'll go to the steam table. There'll be three dishes on top of the counter. The middle one will be macaroni, Nick, and I want you to get that dish before the man in the green hat does. Well, what's in it? Why is it so important? Well, in that macaroni dish, you'll find a metal container. Now, I, I can't tell you what's in it, but I'll meet you here tomorrow, and before you hand it over to me, I'll give you legal proof that it's really mine. I, I can't go myself, Nick. They, they know me by sight. I see. Well, let's see now. Green Hat comes in at 7.03. Yes. At 4 after, he breaks a glass. Right. And I'm to beat him to the macaroni at 5 after. That's right. And be careful, Nick. It'll be dangerous. All right, then. You've got yourself a detective. I'll get that macaroni for you. May even bring back some salt and pepper for this evening. But, Nick, you promised to take me to the penguin room for dinner. It's my birthday. Oh, that's right. Well, never let it be said that a carter broke a promise. We're off to dinner. At the penguin room? No, Patsy, at the cafeteria. <laughs> for a birthday dinner. We'll make it up later, then. We'll take in the penguin room and the moonlight room. Oh, there he is. Green Hat here. Behind you. There by the water cooler. I see. He's looking at his wristwatch. He's awfully big, Nick. Yeah, looks as though he could walk upstairs with a piano under each arm. I don't like that bulge in his coat, either. That's a shoulder holster. 
There goes the broken glass right on schedule. Have you got enough change? The whole pocket, bro. Come on. Right. You lead the way from Green Hat, Patsy. When you see me start the door, get going fast. And leave me outside. Right, Nick. Now, wait a minute. Can I help you, bud? Coffee, black. It's plenty hot. Hello, one. What do you want coffee for now? Might come in handy. There you are. Five cents. Right. Now down to the steam table. We can clean that fast. We'll beat him. Here's the macaroni in the corner. I'll drop a quarter and grab it. Hey, you give me that macaroni. Why should I? I paid for it. Hand it over. Hey, look out with that coffee. Look out. Come on, have to get it. Wait here. Mm-hmm. I'm talking, I spilled on green handle. Didn't get for a while. Could you get the metal container out of the dish? I had a fish. The macaroni for it. I found it. I seen it. See when Grid will come for tomorrow. Round this corner, quick. Yeah. Uh-oh. Okay, one. Tie your butt by hand. Green Yeah, this must be my lucky day. I come out the side door and then you're like a pair of sitting ducks. Careful, bud. This ain't no water pistol. Yes, he's got us, Patsy. Oh, oh hey, it's what? me. You made me drop my purse. Sorry, Patsy. All right, punk. Pick up the lady's bag and come on. We're going visiting. And don't try nothing. Because after that hot coffee stunt, I'm liable to get a little trigger happy. <laughs> Okay, bud, this way. Oh, yes. I couldn't see out of the car as what it's down here in. Down by the docks. Looks like an empty warehouse. Sure, you two. All right, all right, in this door. Oh, there you are. You get it. Well, uh, Colonel, you, you see, uh, this, uh, this punk here and a dame, they beat me to the macaroni. I, I figured something was phony, so I brought him along. Yeah, he was packing this. Oh, I'm 45. Did he have the container? Well, I, uh, I couldn't go over him good in the car. What are you waiting for now? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. Okay, punk, off with your coat. That's it. Come on. Take it off, I said. Yeah. Now, let's see. Keys. Notebook. Wallet. Hmm. Nope. All right, all right. Lift them hands. Come on. Yeah. He's clean, Colonel. Unless he swallowed it. After they handed it to the young lady. Did empty your pocketbook out on my desk? Nick. Say what he says, Patsy. All right. There. Gee, it, it ain't there, Colonel. Well, Mr. Hand me his wallet. Yeah, yeah, here, Colonel. Mr. Carter, I think you owe us an explanation. Since you've hidden something that belongs to us. I paid a quarter for the macaroni, if that's what you mean. You'll check back at the cafeteria. The container was not that dish of macaroni, and you're hiding it, Mr. Carter. Well, we'd better cheerfully murder you and the young lady to get what we want. See here. Get over, Mr. Carter. I'll lock them up in the storeroom. Sure, Colonel. <laughs> I'll take care of them. <laughs> Lonely, Carter. We won't be gone long. Well, Nick? There must be some way out of here. Oh, but Nick, I just love it here. This is just the place for a birthday party. Pitch flat, dusty, grand, drafty. That's it. That's it. What do you mean? There's a draft in here. It's got to come from someplace. Well, that's right. There must be an outlet. Well, let's see. Maybe if I run my hands over the wall... Is. is it open? No, but it's plenty big. There's a grating about a yard square. See if we can find something we can pry the grating off with, Betsy. Okay, but it's sure like looking for a needle in a haystack. Oh, but it's so dark in here, it's even worse. Nick, how come you didn't have the metal container when they searched you? Please, Betsy, one thing at a time. Oh, all right, but... Hey! Hey, I found something. What is it? I, I don't know. Here. <laughs> Some kind of metal. Well, let's see whether it'll work. I sure hope it does. I think maybe it's going to... Are you getting it? Pretty sure I... Wonderful. I got for you, too. Uh-huh. Oh. What's the matter? Oh, I just got a mouth full of dust. <laughs> it's not surprising in a place like this. All right, come on, Betsy. Trick it to follow me down this old stovepipe, or whatever it is. And believe me, it's not going to be a pleasure trip. <laughs> Yeah, 
Careful, Patsy. What? I said careful. The rent goes straight down from here. What are you going to do? Jump. Oh, but no. Nothing else to do. Okay, here goes. You're on him. Are you all right? I'm fine. About an eight-foot drop. Come on. I see. Oh, darling. You won't get hurt. I'll catch you. But you can't see. No, but you'll land in a pile of ashes. Come on, Patsy. We haven't time to talk things over. Well, okay. Here goes nothing. <coughs> oh, Nick. Oh, dear. Where the dickens are we? My guess is that we're inside a furnace. Well, we're certainly lucky that this is summer. Otherwise, you and I might be fairly well done by now. Ah, that's a streak of light over there. Yeah, that's right. Probably the fire door. If it is. Oh, please. We're lucky this is a big furnace. That's a fire door, all right. All right. Wait. All right. Now we'll help you out. Um. Boy, that's just the way to treat a new pair of nylons. There's the door, Patsy. It's open, too. I think it leads to an alley. Yes. Mmm, fresh air. Careful. Green hat may be around someplace. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, dear. What's the matter? I've got ashes in my shoes down the back of my neck. Oh, my. The first thing I'm going to do is go home, take a shower, and get into some clean clothes. Oh, no, you're not. Why, I am, too. Right now, i got a phone call to make. But... And I'm running a race, a very important race. A race? Are you feeling all right? Never felt better. But this race... I'm going to run a race, Patsy, with the Department of Sanitation. <laughs> Covered with dust and ashes, Nick and Patsy hurry through the city on a mysterious race. Their goal, the secret of the container in the wandering macaroni. As their cab careens through the streets, Nick wonders what lies behind the struggle for this puzzling prize. We'll see how he finds the answers in just a minute. Now back to the case of the wandering macaroni. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by Old Dutch Friends. Covered with ashes, Nick and Patsy hail a cab and hurry back uptown. It is after midnight when they are dropped on a corner, and now they hurry along the dimly lighted deserted street. Patsy is still trying to brush the dust off her hair. Nick, I don't see why I can't go home and clean up. Later, Patsy. We're not hurrying now. Ah, there's a cafeteria down the street. Oh, but just look at my stockings. There isn't enough left for them to make a pair of bobby socks. Here we are. What? Why, this is the same corner where Green Hat held us up. Nick, what are you diving into that trash can for? The container from the macaroni. I fixed it in here when I was picking up your purse. So that's why Green Hat couldn't find it when he searched you. I'm afraid the sanitation department can get your purse and empty it again. Oh, blast it. What's the matter? Who puts banana peels in here? You find it? No, not yet. Wait. Yes, here it is. Good. Our little macaroni covered friend. Nick, there's a car pulling up a police car. I know. Dr. Matt. Said he'd meet us here when I go home. Oh. You know, one of these days, Nick Carter, I ain't gonna come running when you call. Hi, Sergeant. Hi, Patsy. Hey, what have you been doing? Playing hide and seek in that garbage can? In a way? He's been tasting a dish of macaroni. And that, at this time of night? Uh huh. You're both going off your rockers. <laughs> now, just stay nice and quiet, and Uncle Matty will call the wagon. Don't be funny, Matty. I'm on a case. I need your help. And how? Back to the three of your files and check a few things. Okay, Nick. Hop in back and I'll take you downtown. Now, what's all this about? I can't tell you much now, Matty, but I have a hunch we're on the trail of something big. All right, sit down, Nick. Carter will have those fingerprints for you in a minute. Where'd you get them? From my notebook cover. The ape with the green hat had his paws all over it when he searched me. Well... They kept the wallet, but he gave me back the notebook. What about the other guy? The colonel? Yes. There, Matty, is a smooth operator. Didn't touch anything. I tried to keep his face in the shadow, but he leaned forward when he reached for my wallet. Uh, why don't you check through our file, Nick, and see if you can spot him from the photograph? Good idea. Patsy, um, she can help. Hey, where is Patsy? Down the hall, washing up. <laughs> you could use some soap, too, Nick. I haven't time. Got to crack this before tomorrow morning when I see Grizzle. Yeah. Any luck in the file? Not so far. No one that even looks like it. Uh, come in. There's a record on the print, Sergeant. Mr. Carter was right. This guy's got a record as long as your arm. Uh, okay, Carter, thanks. Now, read it off to me, will you, Matty? I'll keep looking for the colonel. Uh, well, let's see now. Oh, quite a guy, your man in the green hat, Nick. Yeah. 
Name Shib Garson. Convictions three, six, nine. Mm. Everything from dope and hot cars to making books. Mm, wanted by the Treasury boys for smuggling. I better have him picked up. What's the latest they got on him? Well, here he's been spotted down in South America, Port of San Luis Oro. Looks like the Treasury's been keeping a close eye on that baby, Nick. Well, that's it. Hey, how be it? Well, what is it, Nick? You find the Colonel's picture in the files? Then? No, I found my client's picture. You, what do you mean? Here on this card. Ben Griswold, convicted 1923, illegal stock manipulation. Served two years in state prison. Ben Griswold. Say, I remember that case. I was a rookie when it broke. Remember anything about him, Eddie? Well, now, let me see. Uh, yeah, he was a research scientist, but he got mixed up with a couple of stock-juggling wizards and took the rap. Oh? He's been going straight ever since, as far as I know, though, Nick. So that's what he meant when he said he was a contact man for my father in unusual circles. Huh? Must have been an underworld agent after he got out of prison. Could be. Matter after I check these files, I want to borrow your laboratory for a while. All right, sure thing, Nick. I've got a little special work to do. All right, I'll have Carter open it up for you. But how about the container from the macaroni? I can't wait till morning for the unveiling. Can you pick Griswold up tonight if we need him? That's no problem. We'll find him somehow. Good. And if you can get him down here and hold him till I call, I think we can break this tonight. <laughs> Sure, you don't want to go straight home? No. No, I couldn't sleep anyway. It isn't every girl that gets kidnapped on a birthday instead of being taken to dinner. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Betsy. Maybe I shouldn't admit it, but I was looking forward to that party, too. Thanks for telling me. Oh, here we are. Uh, I think I'll finish those letters before I. What's the Didn't you leave the light on when we went out? I don't know. I think I did. I guess I turned them out, though. It's dark now. Me? Do you think something's wrong? I don't know. There's only one way to find out. Wait a minute. I got the right key. Mm hmm. Okay. Come on, Patrick. I'll get the light. Take the screen off. Yes. And it's dead. Good evening, Mr. Carter. The Colonel. Yes, my dear, the Colonel. I've been waiting for you. Sit down at your desk, Carter. Don't bother reaching in the drawer. I've removed the revolver from it. I warn you, I shoot quickly and accurately, so don't attempt any heroics. You think of everything, don't you, Colonel? I try to. I find it necessary in my business. Your business? Perhaps I should say profession. I'm a smuggler. I'm a very good one. Don't move, Miss Bowen. I have no scruples against using a gun on a lady. I'm, I'm sure you haven't. What's that? Air conditioning. Oh. Works on an automatic thermostat. I see. Scott, I think I'd better convince you that I'm in business. Oh, we're convinced of that already. The container you managed to get out of our hands holds microfilm pan. Sand photographs on small film. Oh, we know what microfilm is. What are those plans of, Colonel? A new and secret process for casting aluminum, which doesn't belong to you. Legally, no. You see, old Griswold discovered a process in South America, but he wasn't too careful about guarding his property. You mean you hijacked it off him? Uh, you could call it that. I knew it would be worth millions to the automobile industry, which would pay heavily to the first man to secure an American patent. I plan to have a front man patented. But you couldn't get it into the country because the treasury men were watching your gang too closely. Precisely. Hmm. That's why we had to adopt that complicated method of delivering the container. And I might add, your shrewd guess decreases your chances of surviving this meeting. You're pretty careless with murder, aren't you? I'm afraid there's been a trail of death following that container. Starting with the original inventor of the process in South America... And ending in our unfortunate friend in the green hat. He failed. And I was forced to remove him. And he may not be the last. Mr. Carter, you won't get clear on that rap, Colonel. On the contrary. It's a perfect setup. Griswold couldn't call the police. Any publicity would call attention to the new process before he could patent it. You'll slip, Colonel. It won't work. I told you this, Carter, to convince you that I'm deadly serious. 
I'm going to get those feelings, and I don't care particularly how I go about it. I think that corpse cooling on your threshold should prove that. Looks as though you're holding all the aces, doesn't it? Exactly. Now the container, please. I grow impatient, Mr. Carter. You don't hand it over by the time I count three. I shall proceed to shoot your secretary right between her very pretty eyes. Mix it watching the unwavering gun in the colonel's hand. He must act now, or the soft-spoken murderer will kill again. We'll see what he does in just a minute. for the conclusion of the case of a wandering macaroni. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by Old Dutch Cleanser. Nick's office is quiet as the colonel covers Nick and Patsy, his fingers tightening on the trigger. The only sound is the colonel's voice. One. Two. Hold it, colonel. I don't see why I should stick my neck out for a client. Nick. Yes. Not to show intelligence. Carter. Nick, how can you... The container I gave you. But Nick, you... Don't argue. Give it to me. All right. So what's the use of hiding it in the heel of my shoe if you're going to double-cross your client anyway? Very clever, Carter. I see the heel on screw. Here it is. Well, guess there's nothing left to do, Colonel. Here's your container. Don't leave your chair. Put it on the desk. Okay. Now sit back. Don't move, Carter. Glad you finally displayed reason. Now, before we decide what to do with you, we'll see whether this is the real container. It opens on this end. It's stuck. Oh. Oh, my eyes out of the way. Oh, 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 oh. I've got the gun now, Colonel. And now we'll see how you like looking down the barrel. Well, it's all set, Nick. We got the colonel booked. Murder in the first. How about the rest of the gang, Matty? All locked up. As soon as you called and told me Green Hat was dead and you'd caught the colonel, Griswold led us to the guy who tipped him off about the macaroni deal and he squealed on the rest. Good. I turned the plans over to Griswold and he's got them in the bank vault. And he better get the patent papers filed in a hurry before anybody else gets any ideas. You know what burns me, Nick? That rat the colonel will probably hire six genius lawyers. Oh, and... no, he won't, Matty. He took plenty before you got here. But he was huh? trying to scare me into handing over the container. He even confessed to murder. Oh, that's fine, but can we prove that to a jury? We could let them hear the confession with their own ears. With a... Just, just before he started talking, I kicked the switch on my recording machine under the desk. Well, I'll be... Got up. everything he said. He thought the noise was the air conditioning, but he was really dictating his own death sentence. But, Nick, how the devil did you get out from under that gun? The colonel looks like a pretty cool customer to me. Yes, Nick. Just what happened? First, I'm looking at that gun too scared to breathe, thinking you were double-crossing your client, and then the colonel screaming that he can't see. Well, I knew the colonel would come to visit me sometime. He had my wallet with my address. My well, that's true. The only way he could locate the container was to come after me. So I stopped in the police laboratory and fixed a surprise for him. While I was washing up? Yes. I took the films out of the container and rigged a little booby trap inside it with tear gas. Well, I'll be doggone. <laughs> but that stunt with the heel of my shoe. Well, Patsy, he'd have suspected me if I just had it in my pocket. Oh. I knew he'd open it up immediately to check. And that's exactly what he did. You got it right in the eyes. <laughs> well, there's still one thing I'm not satisfied with, Nick. Oh, what's that? My birthday dinner. Oh. Even if we do go to the Penguin Room, the head waiter will probably get murdered, and you'll take the case. Well, then, how about going back to the cafeteria for a dish of macaroni? Oh, Well, Nick, what about the adventure Old Dutch Cleanser is going to bring us next week? I'll get to that in just a moment, Bob. First, I want to wish, uh, or rather, I wish to call attention to the fact that this is the first day of National Farm... Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.